What's going on, everybody? Well, we got a special guest today. Hey, Sea, everybody. sea Farmer going to join us. And uh, we're trying to get the new truck ready and put the auxiliary tank in. I have never done one on my own. And so I, I guess as he is going to be showing all of us, but I figure I put it on video. He's done how many? I've done two Chevrolets and three Dodges. So that's more experience than me. I have zero. Uh, but I've got everything else done besides that. And I'm going, I don't, like I said, I don't want to take my plates out for, for the uh, fifth wheel. I'm going to leave them in the red truck just in case I need them. Or also, uh, and I'll put a link down in the description for them. Just in case you're interested, there's a plate on Amazon I'm going to order. And I'm thinking about ordering it and putting it in that truck for a gooseneck. So how you got the fifth wheel, like you pull the pins, you stick this plate down there, you put the, uh, the pins back in it, and you've got your gooseneck. So that way, if, uh, like he has a gooseneck that trailer. Would, that would come in really handy, like if you work at Jimbo, somebody who pulls horse trailers and cargo trailers that are gooseneck, and then you also need the fifth wheel too, so you can go back and forth. Because especially if you, have a, if you have a long bed, you can take him, un pull the pins out of the fifth wheel and move it to the side or move it forward or I saw people do it multiple different ways. And then when they need the fifth wheel, just set it back in. You just leave the gooseneck in all the time. It worked out pretty good. And I have, uh, whenever we put, we're gonna be putting holes in the new truck, I am gonna be using this again for all the holes. The uh, Gauss Clear, uh, that protects it from the rust. Uh, I'm gonna do it from the front and back from all the holes that we're putting in. So we are gonna be using this. Uh, and I'm gonna unwrap this, which I've already, kind of been unwrapping looking for different stuff amazon put different stuff in the same packages and all that i guess cheaper down on shipping um but we're gonna i'm gonna go ahead and unwrap these and uh matter of fact i'm gonna unwrap this one you can unwrap that one so this one right here what i order and i got this the idea off of off of his if you haven't haven't seen this on what he how he does it they stretch your bungee cords now I come and got there's you can get an order one, order a two pack, a four pack, six pack, how many you need. But when I was ordering them, and you also order a four foot or a six foot. Now he orders I ordered a full foot. And right. they were they're working good, but I do notice every now and again they can be a little tighter. And my thoughts was every now and again that metal cable that they have on the trailers is just a little bit too short and if you turn too sharp it'll pull it out. And I figured I'd just leave a full foot in there all the time and hook it to the metal cable. That way, if it didn't need a little extra, it could pull it out. But if it didn't, it would just hang down the bed and not hurt anything anyway. But the six foot, it would be the way to go. I got the six foot. So we're gonna try it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on the side of the truck. I know in the comment section, the way I done my other one, I was hooking it to the hitch, not DLT legal. So that's what these are for. And not only that, whenever they zip tie, the uh cord and everything like you can see in his videos uh if you haven't uh seen his videos that in the video yet. you did well, well, well maybe I've... right there where it comes off the plastic plug that goes into the breakaway uh, goes into the breakaway box instead of unra unraveling that metal cord that comes with it you can pull that out and make sure you're going through the loop the hoop and just run this up and hook the carabiner in that you never even have to mess with that metal cord i like it a lot so not only this i got one so I ordered four, I think. Yeah. And uh, I'm gonna have one on there and I'm gonna have one on my, my trailer right over there. And that way it, it's gonna help. And, and a uh, six foot definitely for a bumper pull. Yes. If you're thinking about getting one for your own trailer. And uh, so uh, we're gonna install this and what did you unravel? I unraveled an uh, installation kit. One of the things I do wanna say about these things though, when I got mine and I took it out of the pack, those things, they're pretty pretty well built. They're not no light junk. They're every bit of the same quality as what you see where I got the idea from on the new fifth wheels and, and campers that are up there that we haul out. I That's noticed, I got the idea like the hook, yeah, on some, the hook as well, because you know, some of them have got them generic hooks where they right. don't, yeah, where getting they wear off, out. Getting them off Amazon, I was nervous about that. And just so you know, if Mr. Tennessee ever calls and says, you should come over today. We'll hang out. I'm going to cook steak. <laughs> well, I did, um, in my fairness, and I, I wanted to put this, and as we started eating, I was wanting to put it, but now these wasn't no little bitty steaks. Now this was a big old fat juicy 
stay. It, it was worth it. It was worth it. No, no complaints. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, we got the installation kit for the Dodge. And if you get one for a Dodge, the, oh Lord, uh, the 12 or 13 and older takes one. And then the, I can't remember. It'll say right here. The 12, 13 and over take the one for the inch and three quarter fill line. And the older one, I want to say is, I don't remember, I'm not going to lie about it. But this is 2013 13 through current on this one. Make sure you get that because if you don't, you'll get it and it will be the wrong size. It's not going to fit. Right. And th that's the reason on the, the other video that I make that's coming out, like whenever I bought the fuel cap to put in, the one on the 2018 will not fit a 2021 and 22. I had to get, because they made it bigger. So I had to get one that was actually bigger to actually fit. Right. Oh, anyway. All right. Uh, well, like I said, here's a six. He, he, he went and got a four out. So that way you can see the difference. Right. The four stretches out pretty good, four feet. But that one definitely is longer. But they're both really, really, really good quality. They I are. Mean, and thick and heavy in your hand and all that stuff. So. And the way I'm going to do mine, uh, we were sitting here discussing it, is well, I'm going to hook it right here because my two box is going right here. So all I got to do is hook it right there and then hook it on and then I'm good to go. Put it right back. It may rub on the corner of the toolbox a little bit, but I think it'll be perfect. And if it's not, we can always change it later, but why drill a hole in a new truck when you don't have to? Right. This looks really good. So, you know. So, my sandwich maker had an idea. I ordered so many of them and uh, I'm going I'm to give C Farmer one of them. He's going to give me one of his fours just in case I need it for anything, for a spare. But I don't have one left. So in this video, uh, the first person that, no, I ain't going to say the first person. We're going to give the video when it runs an hour to whatever, the end of the day. Anyway, I'm going to let my sandwich maker do it because it's her idea. She's going to take and put names in there. Go and put breakaway cable in the comments. Give me a thumbs up in the video. And uh, that one's yours. You oh. have that one? Okay. And uh, she's Not going good. to mail you breakaway cable. So that way you can test it out. A six-foot breakaway cable. I have one extra that I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be using. So put breakaway cable in the comments. She's gonna go through and write everybody's name down, whoever wants one. She's gonna draw a name and then uh, I will email uh, I will send you a comment saying you won and put an email down in the description, just like I did the old light. And which by the way, I'm still loving. Um, and I will send you a breakaway cable. And what I gotta put? Huh? What I gotta put? Oh, you, you already got one, so you don't get another one. So if he wins, he put breakaway cable all the time. He ain't getting it. It's gonna be for y'all. Oh, we're friends. <laughs> but here's the uh, here's everything got laid out. So I'm gonna let him go over all this. Yeah, all this is, is the insulation kit. This is just the rubber fuel line that goes from the tank down to the uh, to the filler neck. This right here, I know a lot of people kind of, when I tried to explain it before, they got kind of got confused. You'll take, on the Dodges, they have a metal filler neck. And what you'll do, say this is the, this was the filler neck on the Dodge. You're going to have to cut a little bit out enough for this welded bung right here to go in, in between it. And then you'll, you don't want to cut too much. So um, it's better to cut, uh, you know, cut two or three times if you have to. But go ahead and cut it and then give it a, probably about two inches and cut it again up closer to the truck. And then you'll slip this on and slide it up on the uh, metal tube that goes from the filler neck to the tank. And you slide this one up on the metal tube, put them together. And then it depends. I don't know if there's a certain orientation way that this is supposed to go or not, but I think they're supposed to go straight up because this is a rollover valve. It has a metal valve inside of it and you can hear it. You can hear the metal ball valve in it, and it's loose enough I can get it out. Uh, what this is supposed to do, to the best of my understanding, if you're going down a road and you accidentally flip upside down, that ball comes down and keeps the fuel from 
coming on out of the tank and feeding into the truck's tank and then over overfilling and that is one thing that makes the gravity feed tanks legal because they're vented and it also has this in the um in the top of the tank so that's about all there is to it like i say you cut that tube if you've got a chevrolet you don't need nothing but a razor blade it's a rubber hose you cut it uh, in the two places and you just stick this in between the rubber hose so now the one thing i want to say about the one i have is uh, there, there are cheaper ones on there. I'm gonna put a link in the description for everything here. The breakaway cables, everything. Um, and don't forget to comment breakaway cable. But the one thing that it caught my eye on this is it's American made. Uh, there's cheaper ones on there, but when it comes to doing something uh, as this, you don't wanna lose fuel. You don't want leaks. You don't want problems. You want something good, so I went with this. And it's not really that expensive. Uh, like I said, they were cheap ones, and they are in. I had to look to make sure where they were at. They was actually in, in Perry, Florida, is where this was, where it was built. I so. I thought they was in Illinois. No, I. Also, RDS makes a lot of the tanks. I yes. mean, RDS is on. I have an RDS tank, and I also have the RDS install kit. So, uh, and I kind of just kind of forgot to talk about this. This is the ball valve that screws in the side of your tank. The little. Um, like almost like a drain plug if you can see up there in the back of that on his tank he's already got one so yeah he's already got one so he won't need this one so this will just be an extra like a spare but you just thread it into the bung on the side of the tank and that's closed that's open and you have four clamps and you'll put two clamps on the truck hose on the truck side on the outer side and then you put two clamps to the inside once you install these make sure and check them and check them check them for leaks right put fuel in your tank now on this one right here you see how that come here bud all right on this tank you see how i have a 90 degree uh elbow on mine and see it's pretty much the same valve so you want to get one of them elbows if you do not have one because if not then look what you're going to be dealing with it's going to be stuck out like this so if you're going to buy this the only thing that don't come with is the 90 degree elbow i would get one of them that's a good point all right guys this hose right here is your filler neck and that's what's got to be cut about right here if you see how these two run side by side there's a bracket on the other end of this, right down here where it's hard to get to, we're gonna have to cut that, okay? When we cut that, there is a ground wire right in the middle, and if you can see it, and I doubt you can from that angle, um, right here, we're gonna have to probably take this ground wire off for the time being, but we're definitely gonna have to be careful not to cut this wire and make sure we got a place to put it back on. But at the end of the day, we're going to cut about two inches out of this tube right here. Okay. Yeah, right now, the clamps, there's a clamp right here on this tube. It's a 5 16 and there's a quarter inch clamp on the little tube. I'm going to go ahead and get those off. And the little low light that he's got, if you uh, have one, a small magnetic flashlight, it's going to help out a lot. Because we just shoved that up in there and it stuck to the bed and it's locking everything up perfect. So, all right, so I have the Milwaukee ratchet with the extension and a 5 16 on the big clamp, and I'm going to go ahead and start loosening it. And that's got it extremely loose, and now I'll change out to the quarter and I'll get this one. So on the smaller line, it is a seven millimeter. I was thinking it was a quarter, but I was wrong. So we got the seven millimeter, got it on. Now we got that one off, or loose. So I'm gonna slide them both back on the big hoses and then we'll go ahead and try to break them loose and wiggle them off. That one's coming off already. And 
I'm going to take the clamps off and put them out here on the step just to make sure we don't lose them. Alright, on this big hose, the little hose just slipped right off. And uh, now on this big hose, I know y'all going to have a hard time seeing, but so am I. If you're doing this, you're going to have to do a lot of it by feel. But I'm going to slide that, that clamp down on the metal lines, and I'm going to grab hold of it and just try to twist, squeeze and twist and it came right off and make sure you're not full of fuel or you're gonna get them you're gonna be in a mess and one thing i like about this being a brand new truck there's not a lot of dirt or anything to fall off on us also we're gonna grab this this clamp right here now that i got it off and bring it back out and i know you might not have been able to see too much of that but hopefully you can see the end result there's the tube that we're going to be cutting right there so Next thing I'm going to do, we got back out from out of the truck, and uh, the next thing I'm going to do, go ahead and take this out. And you see they got a little bit of what looks to be like maybe thread sealing or something. I'm going to wipe that off the best I can. And uh, that's just not enough to make me happy. And if that's not good and tight, it will leak. We're going to use some of this thread sealant tape. This is Blue Monster pipe thread sealant tape. Um, I'm going to go around it this way because at the end of the day you want dragging the tail as you're tightening it up and we'll be tightening it this way so I, I need the tail to be hanging that way so I think I just did that right just pull it good and tight I've never used Blue Monster, but I know I get aggravated with the Teflon tape, or with the, with the white. I was noticing that. That stuff right there feels different, and it, it seems like it's better. It does. So that's all I'm going to put on it. And I actually went completely the wrong way. I don't think it matters too much, but I just now noticing while it was in my hand. But I'll show you what I was talking about. And put this up we're gonna have a ribbon run across the yard so there's that and the way it ended when it ended it's coming this way so now when i'm tightening tightening it up it's gonna unpeel it it may try to unpeel it as i go maybe it won't but we'll see so, no nah, it's doing good I wouldn't think you had to go just super, super, super duper tight with this. And I'm gonna leave it slightly angled. I may have to change it more when I get out of the truck. So I'll take the wrench with me, but I'm thinking Right like that is about where I'm gonna want. I'm gonna want it either 11, 12, or one o'clock. I do want facing up, um, just because that is a rollover valve, and if the truck were to roll upside down, that's the way it would need to be for it to work right. So if you mount it this way, and you're not, if, if you mounted this, and you're having trouble getting your, your fuel from your transfer tank into the truck, if it comes down like this, it's gotta push that ball closed to go to transfer, and that could be your issue. Same if you got it here. But if you got it upright, the ball stays down, the fuel flows past it into the tank. So I hear a lot of guys saying that uh, their fuel tank transfers really slow and then they pull the ball out, you know, and it works fine. But I just, you know, I noticed that either that angle, that angle, straight up and down, I think would be fine. And those just all my personal opinion. I never read a book or anything on this stuff. All right, so back under the truck. All right, so when we put this up here, kind of notice where it's at, and we kind of want to mark it a little bit. So you'll cut it as close as you can to the end of the adapter. That way, when you're when you're finished, the adapter will go right in line, and you won't get it on the straightest part that you can. That way, the rubber hoses will have something good and straight to couple on. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut this with a sawzall. I have the I think they're called red double blades and they are 
awesome and that is why we unhooked it and pulled the other end way away from the fuel line that way we're not going to get any um any any metal shavings out of this end of the fuel line and then we'll clean this out when we get done all right now before you start doing this something i rarely ever do but i did put my safety glasses on make sure you got safety glasses and i'm gonna make my first cut right here i think that's about where i want that to give me right here to get the clamp on so and it should give me plenty of room on the other side too so let's see what happens and make sure it doesn't get into the bottom of the bed that's something i'm trying to watch really close you also got the vent tube right here you don't want it to come through and cut on that get this straight as I can and we'll go ahead and cut the other one right here. definitely make sure where your safety glasses goes. If y'all can't tell, <clears throat> there's metal shavings going everywhere. Got it. <laughs> Just thinking I'd check the fitment. That is going to be a super tight fit, and that's why I would rather uh, cut twice 
if I have to. I hope I don't have to. I hope I can make this work. But, I mean, it's going to be super, super, super tight. We'll check it out though and see what happens. I got to clean all this stuff up and get all the metal shavings. Try to get them out of here. And then we're going to run a rag through this piece and push all the metal out of the other side of it a couple of times. I'll push this rag through from the other side and push it through with a screwdriver. See all that metal come out? That's why we disconnected that tube. I'll probably do that four or five times and uh, make sure we got it where there's no more metal coming out. And then um, that should be good. I would like to think that's good. I may spray it down with like a WD-40 or something that will, with the wet, the wet rag would probably grab better than Nick, you, you don't want all that metal shaving going down in your fuel tank for that fuel pump. I think that's what happened to our buddy's truck, that the fuel pump went out. And uh, we had all the metal shavings in the tank, and we were worried that um, his injector pump was going out. I think somebody, whoever installed his, because I didn't do it, and I don't know who did. I, I think that's actually what happened. So we cleaned up the ends as best we could and we pushed the rag through a bunch of times until we didn't see any metal coming back out at all whatsoever. And now I'm putting the clamps on and at the end of the day, I want the clamps to be like this so they're easy access. So I'm gonna go ahead and set them up right like that. And then on this, when it goes in right like that, I need to turn this just a little bit more. So, be right back with you. Alright, so now I've turned this to where to face that way, face back toward the front of the truck. Now I'll go ahead and stick this in right up in here. Make sure my clamps are still in this good situation. And I cut it tight. I thought about actually trying to take just a little bit more off, but I would rather it be a little bit tight than a little bit loose. So I'm to get both hands on it. I hope y'all can see. Get this other side over here. Pull it on now. Being in that curve on this side kind of makes things aggravating, but. Yeah, sorry y'all, I can't get the angle on that. And then I cut the flashlight off. So we'll go back to wait till he gets the ready for the clamps. Before I get the rubber all the way up on, I want to make sure this thing's pointed exactly the way I want it. Dang.
It's definitely in there tight. I think it's just I'm getting old and can't get a grip. Don't need go much more. Gotta love your old lights. They can take a beating. That one has. I never get a good grip on it. I have it. That's it right there. All right. I think. I can't see no better than y'all can. I stuck a daggone safety glass in on this one. That looks good. Yeah. Yeah, that does. I would like for it to come a little bit more. Yeah. Just, I mean, just a hair more. It'll make me happy. All right. Well, we'll finish get this position and we'll, we'll be is, right. Oh, you already got it? Yeah, it, it's okay. Once it started spinning, it's good now. And pull this on up on it. I think when I'm twisting this going up on, I'm actually turning it back the other way. But now that it's coming out of that curve, it's going a whole lot easier. That's actually about, about it. Clamps up. Watch your old lot and spike your head. Yeah, be my luck. I already fed you. I don't have to pay your doctor bills now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's check everything on top. put the clamps back on them and get them slipped back over and tighten the clamps up on this and that's that'll be the hardest part right there yep we'll tighten the clamps up and be right back all right everybody so now i gotta put a hole in right here so i'm gonna go ahead and see if i can get started spray this stuff on it get it in there real good and I'll go up underneath it and spray it too um, but this piece right here we got to put it on so we don't want none of our, our hoses and look like look like we done we done perfect we drilled a perfect size we don't want none of our, our, our hoses getting on that metal and breaking and next thing you know you got fuel leaks stuff like that so all i'm gonna do is just use two two screws put in like that ow All right, I had to go get a drill bit, poke holes in it, so that way I went ahead and drilled a little small hole in it, so you may have to. Now I got my Phillips screw to put back in it. And there we go. Now, the hose will go right down in there. That's the vent hose right there and it will go down in there and I'm gonna to have to fix this one. So what I'm gonna do is undo this and bring it over. Well, actually I don't have to, I can catch this. I'm gonna drill a little hole right there and get this one. I'll do that and we'll be back. Alrighty, next what we're gonna do is we're gonna put 
the hose on the fuel line on the tank. And then we're gonna run it down and cut the excess off after we get it measured. This can be kind of a pain in the butt because that bar fitting, I mean, it may not be a bad idea to put something in there, something on it to make it a little slicker, but most time it'll go, it just takes a little motivating. There it is. If you ever want to take that off, you're probably going to have to cut it off. Should be good. That little clamp is ratchet to break it, so I'm pretty sure that's on it. All right, y'all. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and drill a hole. All right. There's the hole all the way through. Now we're gonna go to the other side. I'm gonna hand it to Steve Farmer. He's gonna drill a hole on this side. Now, we're gonna go to the middle one right here, and we're gonna use a different bit, but I wanna mark it. So, I'm gonna put it in there, right there. Yep, and I got it marked. See a little pin mark? Now, remember, after you drill your hose, I'm just gonna make this one bigger, and then after, we're gonna spray paint. All right. This is the front of the tank. We had to move the tank over. So I'm going to use a step bit to try to get that to go down. Then we got access to spray. Yeah. Well, I like that thing. I think I, yeah. Oh. Look at that. I like that. Now, we're gonna spray. Now we'll move the tank back. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drop the, uh, it's a half inch bolt. I'm gonna drop it down there, see farmers on the bottom. He's gonna put the uh, washers, lock washers and springs on, and we're gonna tighten it up. All right, so he's got his part on the bottom, so I'm gonna put it on here. You don't want to tighten it all the way down. Let the spring do its work. So when you buy a fuel tank, you get a hardware pack with it. And one of the things that come with a hardware pack, you get the bolt and you get some washers. All right, you have your bolt, you'll slide on one washer. This is the way it was explained to me whenever I bought my tank. I'm not gonna say who told me, but it's been two or three different places it told me. So anyway, you drop this bolt through the bracket and the bed and it's gonna come out on the bottom side of the bed like this. So you'll put one washer on that goes up against the bottom of the bed. Then you put the spring on, just like so. And then 
this washer is one that come off of it, but it, um, I think it's one that come off. I'm gonna have to look back on that. But anyway, you get the gist anyway. So, and then it had a lot washer on it. And this was not installed by us. This was installed by somebody else. These are washers that came off. I think we need to find a smaller washer out there. I didn't notice that before. Anyway, what you do when you tighten this down, you're gonna compress this spring a little bit and get this off here. And then we're gonna have to find another washer, flip this around. Or actually, you know what? I bet this is how they had it right here. But still, that's not the right size washer for that bolt. Anyway. So this washer goes on. Once it drops through the bed and it's sitting down through the bed like so, you put this washer on, you put the spring on, you put the other washer on, and that sandwiches that spring. Then when you put the nut on and you tighten it down that I dropped it right behind the fuel tank, you want to crush it down not hardly halfway, more like a quarter of the way. The reason for that is when you're going in uh, parking lots and stuff and your truck flexes, the bed can flex. And if it gets that flex on it, if it's rigidly bolted to the bed, it can actually crack your tank. That's what they told me and that's why they said definitely use the springs. Do not over tighten them. You just want to compress them a quarter, about a quarter of the way. Quarter to half. My tank has been in my truck for two years. No issues whatsoever. And that's exactly how I installed it. Just wanted to make sure you guys, you know, that I went through that. Explain that. Yep. All right, so we're on this side, and I'm gonna drop the bolt down in there, and I'm gonna hold it down so he can get the nut and everything on it. All righty, we got everything on the bottom, so I'm gonna tighten it up. A little more. Okay. A little more? Yeah, a little bit more. That's good. All right. All right, so now we're ready for the center one. We're not going to tighten this one up super tight. They already got the washer cut because they're going to have to take this one back out to put my fifth wheel bracket in. So I'm going to put it in there. Let him get his stuff started. Got it? Okay. All right. So and what I'm doing, I'm using the extensions. The reason I'm using the extensions is to keep it above the fuel tank. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this thing on one because I don't want to tighten it, tighten it. How we looking? Okay, I put it on two. All right, right there, good. You want more? There we go. All right, so on the bottom, here's what the finished product looks like. Um, it's not finished, finished, but the part I was working on earlier. I've just tightened all four of the clamps down. When you tighten your clamps down, make sure that you leave them in a very easy spot to get to next time. Don't just throw them on and nail them down. And then you can see where he put the the uh, grommet through earlier and it's all screwed in nice and neat. I don't really like how tight this looks, but I think it's gonna be fine. Anything I try to do with it, it's gonna do the same thing. I may try to twist it around like that. That looks a little bit better. And then we're going to measure off to how far it takes to get to the inlet over here and go ahead and cut that off. And I'll need my other arm to do that. I'm probably going to block out your, your sight. But... I think we cut it about right there. I, say, I don't know if you guys can see where right there is at, but... Trust me, it's right there. Of 
cut it a little bit long because you can always trim it more later but once you cut it too short it's too short now you got problems they gave us plenty of fuel on in this kit we even if we messed up really bad we still have enough to do it again so now What I'm looking at is to make sure whenever it goes on, I want the clamp facing forward. So it will go like that. I want the clamp facing this way. And now, so I don't have to do it in an awkward, a more awkward position, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten the clamp up as tight as, tight enough so it's snug against the pipe. That way it's not just flopping around but in my way. But it is far enough that it is good enough that it's not going to be in the way and it'll still go over that barb fitting when I slide it up on here. Here's my screw. Hang up. That's got that. Spin this around where it's facing up. Move it on into place over that barb fitting where we want it. And the ratchet to snug it down. I can snug it down with the ratchet. I got it as good as I could. Um, facing as good as I could. Toward a good side. This is definitely the better side, but that's still going to be tight even with, the, even with the ratchet. So that has got this part of that process finished. Complete. Yeah, I believe we're all good. All right, y'all. Uh, we finally got the, the tank in and everything. And uh, that was the first time I used a step bit, and uh, I bought it from Sea Farmer. And uh, I'm gonna get on Amazon and order me one. That thing, it went to y'all seen it? It went through the bed like that. I was, and you could feel it as you're drilling down, and boom, it feel like a like a little latch or something. And you can pull it up, and check your bolt size, so you don't make it too big. And I went down to another, and I felt it like give in a little bit, a little bit more. Boom, it's perfect. So I'm very pleased. Uh, he done a lot of work, uh, so. I want to give my hats off to him. He come over and help me out. Appreciate it. Because I've never put a tank in. That was the first time. So hope it helped y'all out like it helped me out. Teaching me how, how to uh, put in an auxiliary tank. Been a whole lot better if we got a lift. So when y'all want to donate a lift, I'm just joking. But we're, um, <laughs> uh, 
getting ready to wrap everything up and got anything to say? Yeah, I, I have no idea what I'm doing. I just, I did mine. And then I had a buddy that needed one done and I did that one. Then I had somebody else ask me to do one. I did that one. And I think that this right here, I think, I think that's number five. And uh, whether I'm doing it right or not, don't know. But if it leaks, we'll let you know. And on that step bit, the first time somebody handed me one, I said, what do I need this for? I thought it was a top, you know? And man, them things, it, it worked good. But, uh, and I just happened to remember I had one in there because we didn't have a bit the size of that boat handy. Mine, I got one and it's broke. But anyway, no, that's about it. I love his new truck. It makes me jealous I want one, you know? But uh, anyway, that's about it as far as I know we're done. All right, well, y'all be careful. Y'all be safe out there. And I'll see you on the next one.